Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at a submission that's been sent in by Catherine Potter and her horse, Calf. And uh, her horse is a 14-year-old warm blood trichaner cross that she's had for some years. He did, at two years old, he broke a hind sesamoid. So I guess he had quite a few problems and has had quite a, a, a challenge with the farrier and, and that sort of thing. But she looks like uh, she's done a great job of rehabbing him. Uh, and I just want to say this is such a commendable ride, just even starting out here. Now, just a little bit about Catherine, which I'll share with you all, which she shares in her letter in. Uh, she understands that she has a weight problem, and she's working on that. She, as I said, she has a thyroid problem, but she's committed, you know, to making that work. Now, if she were too heavy to ride the horse, and the horse were not able to support her, I would be saying the first thing is you are too heavy for this horse, so everyone understand that. But I'm happy to say that she's holding herself up, and here's a perfect example of the difference. If she were to collapse on the back of this horse, the amount of weight that she has there, he would never be able to sustain her. But the fact that she's stretching up and she's actually trying to lift herself up instead of sort of hunkering down into the saddle, you know, even though she, you know she's carrying more than she should be, you know, and it's a lot to ask of the horse but she's found out that by putting him in the frame where he can carry horse, horses can carry a great deal of weight but only if their backs are being used in the proper way that allows them to do it and as you see how this horse has learned to stretch and what a wonderful swinging four beat walk he has now and she talks about in her letter how he was quite nervous and uh you know, would get very angry with her, and she realized finally that she was, in fact, he wasn't strong enough to carry her, you know, and uh, so she being asked to do a job that the horse really wasn't prepared to do. Now that she is preparing him, and she understands how to do that by getting the horse to stretch the length of his top line and lift his back up, a horse can support a lot of weight, you know, in, in this manner, if it is, you know, supported correctly. You can only imagine, I mean, my own father, he used to comment also about the distance, you know, horses had to travel, you know, and he'd always talk about how if a horse could make it to the next town or not, you know. And, you know, this kind of work used to be really important to people who understood it and used horses for long distance. You know, I've seen a few, um, you know, drawings that were renderings and, you know, from some of the Pony Express things from the past, and uh, it was very interesting to see how the Pony Express rode in a two-point position, and the horses were galloping quite round, you know, at least in these drawings that I saw of it. You know, so what I always say is that, you know, people who understand have always known. I mean, a horse is a horse, is what my father told me years ago. And, you know, once you understand how to work them over the top line, no matter what their job is, they're going to be able to do it more easily. doesn't matter whether they're on the racetrack or they're steeplechase horses on the racetrack. You know, are there three-day eventers? Are there just dressage horses? They all need to be working over their backs in order for that connection to happen so that they can do their job with the least damage to themselves. So, Catherine, this is a wonderful job you're doing with this horse. She's really got him swinging out. She'd mentioned also that uh, he had had some ulcer problems. And I will tell you all that, if, you know, when you ride in this way, things like your ulcer problems, your ulcer problems will mostly disappear. Um, if not entirely. You know, horses, just like people, develop nervous stomachs, as they say, always people who are, you know, tortured and that sort of thing, who know that, you know, the torture is coming back every day to do it again. You know, can imagine the nervous wrecks they are. Well, that's exactly what horses go through. When people lock them in horrible little confining stalls and, uh, and then, then they bring them out, strap them down with all kinds of gear and then start, you know, uh, beating on them, for lack of, you know, a better word, because that's really what it is, trying to make forcing them against their hands and you know of course so every day they basically sit in there and and fret about it happening again because they know before the day's over someone's going to be coming pulling them out and doing them the same things again so they develop nervous stomachs horses trained in this way you know and the, that have begun in this way i've never seen develop anything like that because they're basically happy content they know what their job is and they know that they know that the job was is within the scope of what they can do and so they don't resist it and as they develop they, that job can become more intricate and more physically demanding but as long as we build the strength in the horse to do that job they're usually quite happy to do it you know movement is part of the animal's nature you know all animals of flight their nature is is to be physically fit and be the one who's prepared to run the fastest they you know they want to be able to do that so they're very happy it makes them feel good to be able to do that but if riders are constantly pulling them back and altering their frames in ways that you know don't allow uh, their body to work in, as nature intended them. And this is really wonderful how she's stretching this horse here. Once again, this is how nature intended it to be. Um, it's a wonderful thing.
So how nice and long this horse's neck is. Once again, she hasn't dropped her weight at all throughout this entire workout so far. She's just got him longer and longer and swinging. She's kept him in a really good rhythm, and she's carried herself really, really well. So this is wonderful. I would suggest, um, Catherine, I know for myself, I had some health problems some years ago. I'm actually a celiac patient, and I almost died before I realized I was allergic to wheat. Um, but when I was regaining my health, um, I became a raw foodist. And I know a lot of people who have. And I would highly recommend that you look into that. Um, raw food is a, is a wonderful thing. Uh, it, it, there's something more in food than just nutrients and proteins and vitamins. You know, there's actually life energy. And it's very filling and energizing when you eat that way. I eat a product called Raw Meal that I actually eat two of my meals a day because I'm not a cook and it simplifies my being able to do that. But uh, I wish you'd try that and I think you'd find it would really help, you know, expedite uh, your weight loss process and, and your own, you know, just general health. Now she's moved into the trot here and we can see he's still a little hollow, but she's not at all, you know, interfering with her hands. Once again, just like she did in the walk, you know, she's purporting herself very, very well on the top of the horse. He's swinging pretty well here, but he still needs to be a little bit deeper. There he goes like that. That's what we want to see. Now, once again, look how look at the horse's top, top line here, how all the muscles across the top line. You know, if you kind of look back, you can sit back and see how it looks like a big ball rolling over the ground when he gets in that really good position. Now, right there, once again, his head came up and he kind of lost his hindquarters again. Watch the difference between what happens between the front and back end when she gets him into the correct position. He needs to just be swinging a little more. There she goes like that. There, she gets a little more out of him. He starts to swing through a little bit. And I love how she's simply keeping it simple. She's doing exercises that are within her ability and the horse's abilities. Big, wide, sweeping turns. You know, every corner should only be a quarter of whatever the smallest circle you can ride. So if your horse is only working on 20 meters, circles then your corner should be the co a quarter of a 20 meter circle as he begins to be able to circle smaller your corners will be smaller and tighter many riders make the mistake of driving their horse's head straight into the corner and then dragging him around thinking this is going to make them bend it doesn't do anything of the sort it simply throws them out of rhythm because they have to suddenly make a hard turn which is usually one heads done against the bridle or the horse has to slow way down in order to make the turn. So remember, we want to keep the rhythm the same, which she has done a wonderful job of doing throughout this exercise. Now, once again, he could still get a little bit longer and lower, but he's still working over his back right there. That's really nice for him right there. And look how he just gets a little more uh, flexion in the hock when he gets in that position. Just doing a little bit of lengthening, not bad there. Still needs to be a little bit deeper. I'd like to see him get deeper before he do the lengthenings. I mean, at his level, and once again, he needs to get used to your level of weight. And uh, so, of course, hopefully what's going to happen here with the two of you is that as he gets fitter, you're going to become thinner. I know you can do it, and it's going to be wonderful because... Catherine, I'm seeing a very sensitive rider here who could be very good. You've done this on your own with only looking at our videotapes, which makes me feel very, very good because that's why I put them out here. You know, I know I was fortunate to get an education and uh, have three or four masters in my life, you know, and by combining, you know, all of their information, you know, and what I knew about horses, you know, from my father, I was able to uh, come up with a good way of doing things. But I was fortunate enough to get on a couple of horses that were right and uh, that helped me all along the way. So you're doing a great job of this being just working on your own. What you're getting right there is very correct for this horse's level. And just exactly that's his working trot. Maybe just a little, there's maybe a little more in there. He could swing just a little more actively, but that's really quite good. There we go, like that. Now wonder, look how wonderfully long the neck is. There's no shortening of the neck. We never shorten the neck. That's the biggest misconception and the beginning of so many problems is that so many people are trying to pull the neck back into the horse while the horse is trying to go forward. It just it makes absolutely no sense. Think about it. You know, uh, try holding your neck in some strange, you know, forcing your chin down to your chest or something and then try to walk and see what it feels like. It's just not how the body was designed to work. You know, so when you pull the neck up to such a point that the back drops, that disconnects the front and back end. But how wonderfully Catherine is keeping this horse swinging and active over its back. 
This is a really exemplary work here that I'm seeing and shows me a writer who's really sensitive and has figured it out. You know, she's felt it when it's right. And once you feel that, that's the goal you're always working for. You know, the problem that we have today is that, you know, most people have never actually been on a horse. I was myself the same way. You know, I was very good in my youth at getting horses heads down and getting them to go over fences. You know, I was a three day event rider and I was the guy whose horses never stopped you know, because I could get them ahead of my leg. But then I started learning dressage and conflicting things, and that's where it all went wrong. So be sure you don't do that, and Catherine isn't doing that. Wonderful job with this horse. I really commend you, and I look forward to seeing more videos from you in the future. Really lovely job, Catherine.